fireside. All right, welcome to our last team call of 2021. How weird does that sound? Wow, we're already here at the end. Um, real quickly, wanted to do some recognition. Um, to coaches with points on the board. Shout out to Genevieve Strzok, Laura Simon, Rachel Johnstone for already helping um, four people get started on a total solution pack and hitting success club. Next we have Angela Waters. I feel like this is incorrect for her. I think she has 10. Um, Stephanie Hensley, and then with points on the board, Jessica Warren, Denise Houston, Aaron Marquis, Kristen McNair, Jackie Robb, uh, Dakota Stoughton, myself and Rochelle Miller. I don't know how accurate these numbers are because I don't know if everyone has updated them, but shout out to everyone on the board. We have this week um, to really help more people. And this is such a great time to get people started. They're in that weird, what we call twilight zone a month or week actually where they are kind of still in holiday-ish mode, but they also know I need to get my life in order and want to start 2022 strong. So it's a great time to do follow-ups. It's a great time to share and invite because people need the solution that we have to offer. Um, a lot of times people go to drastic measures to change their health, and we know that that's not sustainable or realistic, and we have such a great, great solution for them. So um, let me see if I can go ahead and share our presentation and we will get the party started. So who, raise of hands, watched part one of our presentation on goals? Cool. If not, um, you can catch a recording. We have it in um, Team VIP, the recording for you to watch, um, but you can get caught up and it's kind of like the things that hold us back from setting goals. But now we're gonna take it to part two on what, what it takes to have set real, healthy, intentional and strategic goals. So to get us started first, I want to share this quote. I shared it on Instagram yesterday and it really spoke to me and it says, don't look at the future and assume it will build with time. Nothing good comes with just time. There must be sowing. And that is so true. I also read a quote that 64% of Americans are going to retire with not enough money in their retirement account because they assume, okay, well, with time, I've got 30 years or however old you are, I'll have enough before I get there. But without a solid plan, they get to retirement and realize I didn't save enough. And I think it's the same thing for us. We just assume, oh, you know, it'll work out, you know. Well, if I give it enough time, if I see in this enough time, it'll all work out. But really the future doesn't shape itself. We have to be intentional about what we want to accomplish, not only the year ahead in 2022, but in years to come. So that's what we want to talk about today is really, really being intentional with that um, and making sure that we're setting ourselves up to succeed in the future instead of being surprised that we didn't hit our goals. Okay, so today we're diving into what type of goals. At the end of our last goal call, we asked you guys to just put down what are your goals for 2022? We didn't ask you to put a ton of follow through thought. We just wanted you to kind of dump it out. What is your big business goals for this upcoming year? Is it to hit elite, premier, become a five-star team, become a 10-star team, superstar diamond, earn $300 a month, earn $300 a week? You know, just kind of getting those goals down. And then we, what we want to do tonight is really having those goals set in front of you, look and figure out, are we actually setting goals that match you, your season of life and what you're headed towards, or are we kind of just haphazardly throwing them around? So there's two types of ways that you're going to feel after you make these goals. So when you've got it written down and it's staring you in the face and you're looking ahead at 2022. If you have a healthy, intentional, and strategic goal, you should feel excited. You should feel energized, focused. You have that discipline to get up at 5 a.m. to do your power hour or to get up at 5 a.m. to do your workout so that you can get your day going. You feel calm, grounded, confident, and you trust the process. You know, this is where I'm headed. I'm excited. I can see it. I can visualize it. I see myself walking the stage as a 2022 elite coach. I see myself earning those paychecks when I check into my online office and I see that my team cycle bonus has grown to $300 every single week. You can see it, you feel calm, you feel focused, you feel excited. 
when you're in a place where you're setting unhealthy goals that you're just kind of grasping at and it's coming from a place of lack and desperation and often coming from a place of comparison of where you feel you should be and where you feel you should want to go, you feel needy and you feel aggressive and frantic and anxious. And that's when you get that kind of hustly, you feel hurried. And that's when you feel those feelings and you start to tell yourself, oh, I don't have time for this. Oh, I need to take a step back. Oh, I do. Oh, this, 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 this. All the excuses start coming in when you have a goal that's kind of wrapped around this energy because all of a sudden you don't have the excitement and the focus and the calm to just get it done. Because if you really look at it, nobody who has had massive success in this business has ever had it easy. Nobody didn't have to put in the time and the effort and the work. But when you're doing it coming from a place because you love what you're doing, you're excited for the reward, you know what's coming, you're laser focused, you're super disciplined, all those obstacles that are coming and are going to hit you regardless, don't phase you because you're headed, you know where you're going, you're focused, you're driven, and you're trusting the process. When you're making those goals out of an unhealthy place and you're doing it from a place of scarcity mindset and desperation and I need this and I deserve this and I should have this and I don't want to work this hard, then that's when all those obstacles become big bombs that just become an excuse as a reason for you to quit, slow down, take Take a step back, stop working your business, insert, insert, insert. So looking at the goals that you set for yourself, where do you kind of feel that you fall in a line between this healthy, intentional, strategic, or this unhealthy, made from the slack and desperation? And we're going to take those goals and kind of give you a checklist to see where it lands. All right. So goal checklist. So as you're thinking about your goal for what you want to achieve, I want you to ask yourself, is this coming from a place of lack or scarcity of your own personal resources of like, I have to make this work. Maybe it's a money situation. Um, I know that for me, it was in the beginning was kind of like a money situation. Now I didn't tell myself I had to make a million dollars a year. Right. But I was like, man, if I could make just $500 a month, that would help me. But if I had said, if I, I have to make $5,000 a month, that would have put me in a place of like frantic energy. Or is it coming from a place my setting goals of like, okay, I have to get as many people as possible because other people are going to get them if I don't, right? That's just not a healthy place to really set goals from. Another question to ask yourself is, is this, am I creating this goal because I have FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Am I looking and seeing what other people are doing and like, well, dang, they're having massive success. Maybe I should set my sights for that too. And you know, maybe that's what I want. And maybe it's not something that really connects with you, right? It's not really an aligned goal for you and great for them. But also when we don't keep our eyes ahead and our blinders on, it's easy to get caught up in what other people are doing and set these massive goals that we're not really behind. And so we don't actually put the action forth. And then at the end of the year, we feel discouraged, but really that was never really a great goal for us anyways, to begin with. We just set it because we saw other people setting it. I'm telling you right now, I am very guilty of this. So I'm telling you these things and I'm talking to myself as well. Um, are you setting a goal because someone else is determining your goal for you and you're afraid to disappoint them, okay? So we all have mentors in this business. You have your upline, but at the end of your, the day, um, as an upline and as a coach and as a mentor, my goal uh, and your coach's goals are to help you reach your goals, right? So what does that look like for you? For some of the coaches on my team, it is to earn $300 a month. That would be awesome for them. That would get their products paid for. It would help a little towards groceries or saving for a vacation, and that's awesome. For some of my coaches, Coaches, it's 300 a week. For some of my coaches, it's 3,000 a week, right? And it's not my job to tell them what their goal should be. My job as your mentor is to help you achieve the goal that you want. So just know our goals are very personal. Don't get caught up on what other people are doing and don't get caught up on what you feel like your the expectation should be for you. Really check in with yourself and say, what is it that I truly want? With that said, be honest with yourself. Don't settle for 300 a month if 300 a week is what you want or a long-term vision, uh, 3,000 a week is what you want. Of course, we want to stretch ourselves, but really be honest with what is it that you really want? And if anything were possible and you knew that it could happen for you, what do you want? Big or small, no judgment either way. Just be very honest with yourself. 
The next one is kind of funny, but is this goal going to give me what we like to call chihuahua energy? If you've ever been around a chihuahua, they tend to be a little frantic, a little uh, snappy. They're kind of all over the place. And honestly, their nervous energy kind of makes you nervous. So we talked about setting those healthy, intentional, strategic goals, and then other goals that come from lack and scarcity. You know you're in that position when you're like a chihuahua and everyone can feel and it's kind of like desperate and needy and getting attention. Oh my God, I got to get this goal. That's not a way to live. And that is the quickest way to burn you out and exhaust yourself. And in this goal with network marketing, this is something that we want you to sustain because true success, if you're consistent over time, that's where the true um, success can come from. But not if you burn yourself out with that frantic uh, scarcity energy. So again, am I putting, getting myself as setting a goal that's going to put me into that chihuahua energy? And then the last one, which I think is really, really big and definitely a gut check for myself is, okay, if I'm setting a goal, Goal, a big goal that's going to stretch me and push me. Do I have the correct systems in place to make this happen? Okay. Or will I be scrambling and creating things as I go, hoping it works out? Okay. So I will always think business goals and fitness goals, health and weight loss goals align so well. We know people who are like, okay, this new year, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. It is time after 2020 and 2021, I've gained 30 plus pounds and it's time for me to do it. And they have no plan. They have no plan whatsoever. They're just like, I'm gonna start eating healthy and I'm gonna start, you know, just finding some workouts on YouTube and away we go. They don't have a system. They don't have any sort of plan in place to help them out to succeed. And most likely you're gonna fail. So make sure that the goals that you're setting, that you also have systems in place already or that you can create that are going to help you push you along that path so that you're not frantically trying to create as you go, just hoping, putting anything against the wall and hoping it sticks. All right. Okay. So now that we have that kind of, we have your goal checklist and you have the goals that you came with from last time, or maybe you didn't, that's okay too. We're going to take just a minute or two here and either adjust or reframe or kind of reconfigure or just do a brain dump of what your goals will be for this upcoming year. And they can kind of get as detailed as you want, but I want you to put them in three categories. I want you to give yourself an income goal. And depending on what you're doing, where you started in this business, it can be a weekly goal, it can be an annual goal, a monthly goal, but give yourself an income goal that you want to achieve in this upcoming year, whatever that means for you. It can be an average, it can be a total, whatever works for your brain. And then second category, I want you to put a recognition goal. Beachbody highly, highly, highly praises recognition and does a great job with the recognition team. And, and it's just a great way to keep your business moving in a fun celebratory way. So it's great to separate income and recognition, recognition goals because they don't necessarily go hand in hand, but they're great to have because it keeps your business moving forward. So setting a recognition goal, that can be hitting success club every month in 2022 because you get all of those benchmark prizes along the way. It can be earning enough money to go on the success club trip for 2023. That could be your recognition goal. It could be hitting emerald, diamond, one star, two star, all the way to the 15 star. That can be your recognition goal, but have a recognition goal that is based off of that team beach body piece there. And then have an action goal. And what I mean by this action goal is the income and the recognition, those are outcomes. Those are outcomes that are going to be coming from your work level and you can't necessarily control yes or no, it's going to happen, but your action and your follow through goal is absolutely controllable every single day of the year. And that is the most important. So for you, what does that look like? That action goal can be that you're setting really big business hours, not big. You're setting really stable business hours where you're saying, this is when I'm working my business. This is a business. I'm going to treat it as such. I'm not going to treat this business as a, when I have extra time, when I'm done with everything else, I'll squeeze it in. If I can one to two times a week, if that sometimes I'll work it, sometimes I won't, but maybe it's set your setting and you're really treating this business with respect because you want it to pay you back as such. Maybe your action is that you're going to be really consistent with the content that you put on social media. I know for Raquel and I, that's a big goal for us moving into this next year is to be much more consistent with the content that we're putting out and the, and the frequency that we're putting it out. Maybe that is something that you're looking into. Maybe your action, your follow through is tracking your business and actually treating your business as a business and being the CEO who knows the numbers, who knows what's happening and get invested in your business so that it can become fruitful. 
So take a minute if you haven't already, give yourself an income goal, a recognition goal, and an action follow-through goal. If you feel like, I'm not quite sure where I wanna go with this, I'm not quite sure what is realistic, make sure to reach out to your upline. You can sit down and kind of have a goal conversation of what makes the most sense. And in our next call, we'll be talking about how to break down achieving these goals, but right now, just get them out. If you were at the end of 2022, what would you look back on and feel really, really proud to have accomplished? What would impact your life? What would impact your family's life in the positive way? And write that down. And if you're feeling really bold and want to share, you're more than welcome to put it in the chat as well. I feel like we need like some Jeopardy music happening right now. <laughs> I see some serious thought happening. Angela Waters, five star diamond elite. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So that's your recognition goal. Do you have an action goal or an income goal? $1,500 a week by the end of 2022. So averaging $1,500 a week by the end of 2022, 1,000% doable. So looking at this, looking at, okay, so shooting for five-star diamond elite and having a goal of $1,500 a week, we can tell you that those things align. Is it, is it guaranteed? No, of course not. You could be a two-star diamond making more than $1,500 a week. And you could be a five-star diamond not making $1,500 a week. So those don't have to be together, but they are very closely aligned. If you're pushing your team for a working, rocking five-star team, your income is naturally going to progress and parallel alongside. So those are perfectly, those flow perfectly together. Um, so that was a great example of, of pulling that together. So we'll, we'll move on in the call so that we don't, we can end on time. But take time to really look at this because we don't want you to just set goals because you feel obligated to set goals at the beginning of the new year. It does you absolutely no good to set a goal just to set a goal and then it gets tucked into your binder and it's out of sight, out of mind. And then in June, you look at it and you're like, look how audacious I was in January. That is wonderful. And I made zero steps towards it. So don't, you know, really take the time to be intentional about this so that we can help you with that follow through process as we go. Once you've set your goal, here is the piece that is sometimes overlooked, but is completely necessary if you really want to follow through. So you need to ask yourself, we had that checklist before to determine, okay, is this a healthy, strategic, intentional goal? But once you said, yes, I feel excited about it, I'm here for it, it makes sense, it aligns with what I want to achieve, the next thing to ask yourself is, who do I need to become in order to achieve this goal? Because... It's going to require you, if you have a next level goal, it's gonna require a next level you, right? When Jessica and I started out this business and we were set our sights and we we're like, ooh, elite. I don't know what that means, but I want it. Five Star Diamond Team, absolutely. We had to grow into that. We had to decide right there that we were going to start acting like an elite five star team. And what that meant was we started these team calls that we've been leading for seven years right? Whether there were three people on or just me and Jessica on, we acted like we had a whole great team of successful people that were jumping on because we were like, no, we are going to be the part. And what would that look like? Next thing is how do my thoughts, actions, and feelings need to upgrade to show up at that level needed to bring the outcome I want? So you have to start thinking like you're at that level, you know, 
Angela, I'm going to use that example because you gave it to us. You know, I talked about what does a five-star diamond coach do? Well, how does she show up in her business? How does she show up online? How does she interact? What are the actions she's taking? How does she, what is she feeling? I want you to put yourself in that feeling of what it feels like to be a leader of a five-star team, right? How you start to start feeling those feelings now and showing up like that, thinking like that and acting like that. Regardless if you're a brand new baby coach, if you, the goal is I want to be making $500 a month, start acting like that, start talking like that, start taking the actions and feeling those feelings so that you can start embodying it. What does it look like to step into the next level version of myself? Really take some time to think about what does that look like? What does that look like for me? How do I run my business? Do I have set business hours? Do I treat this like a hobby? Do I treat it like a business? How do I handle disappointment? This is a huge one because disappointments are inevitable, especially in business, but you have to know, okay, if I'm a five-star diamond team or I'm making this much a week, hearing no from somebody that I invited is that really going to affect me or am I going to brush it off and let it go? When coaches or I get a person, a client that cancels their Shakeology, is it going to just ruin my mood? Or I'm like, hey, that's all right. Not for them at this time. I'm going to keep it moving. If you have a coach join you and then decides that she's just not for her anymore, or takes a step back, how do you show up in that energy? Um, and how do you step into that next level? And here's the big one. What thoughts do I need to intentionally create in order to hit this goal? Most of the thoughts that we have going on in our, our heads daily are recurring thoughts that we think every single day. Literally, we have the same exact thoughts that keep on. Maybe we get some new ones here and there, but for, the same, for most of us, it's the same thoughts. So you have to be intentional about creating the thoughts of who you are, who you want to be, and where you're going. If you've been around for any amount of time, I'm a huge big believer of affirmations. Some people think they're hokey. I think they work. But I had to start intentionally changing the way I was thinking. Before I started this business, I leaned more to the negative side, right? And I had to retrain my brain to be like, what is a better feeling thought? If I could choose to think differently, what would that look like? And it's being aware of the thoughts that are coming up and taking that step to really ask myself, could I choose to think about this differently? Because it's always a choice. You just have to be aware and intentionally choose those thoughts. And then finally, energy is everything. So once you have the goal and you figure it out, okay, yes, it's aligned with how I want, what I want to achieve. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, I'm excited about it. I understand what I need to do. Then you need to step in the decision of the energy of it's decided and it's done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's done. Whether it happens on the timeline that I want or whatever, it is done. Decide and it's done. And that's kind of like an energy that you just have to practice, right? So that just means, again, allowing yourself to be like, yes, it's done. I am, uh, you know, making $500 a month, or I am a five-star diamond elite team, or I'm a premier team, or I'm a diamond coach, whatever it is, decide, here's my goal, and it's done. It is done. I'm doing the actions. I'm stepping into that person, and there's no other option but for it to be done. Okay. So again, that's a practice, but reminding yourself that I am this version of myself, this goal is achievable and I'm taking actions every single day to make it happen. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. Okay. Continue. What feelings do I need to have about myself, my products and my offers to have the outcome I want? So this meaning, do you really believe in what you do? Do you like, like I was telling Raquel when we were preparing for this call, like I'm obsessed with the job one workouts. Like I'm here for it. The 20 minutes is my jam. They're so efficient. There's no wasted time. Like I am here for it. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you're like, eh, I kind of don't like him. I kind of don't. You need to be doing something that fires you up. That may, Because when, I do it, when I'm doing these workouts, I'm thinking everybody for the new year should do this workout because it's only 20 minutes. And I have, I've been in the gym industry most of my adult life. So I have seen the new year resolution happen so many times and people come in hot and heavy and they work out for hours a day and then they're in the sauna and they're doing all these things and by mid-February it is a ghost town back in the gym and I'm like I hate that people do that I hate that people feel like they need to go so hard so fast and I really have belief in what we offer and I have belief that I'm like if I could just get everybody to do these 20 minute little workouts and then just do these couple of nutrition staples that I'm offering, they would have such good success because I believe in what's happening. And I, I believe it to my core. If you do not, it's going to make reaching your goals 
so much harder. So if you're not loving your workout, if you're not finding your groove with your nutrition, I have changed my nutrition within this business a ton. And I finally feel like I've found my sync with it. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly molded into Beachbody. You can make it your own and still be really proud of the products that you offer and, and not have to offer every single thing and feel like you're a Beachbody billboard because that makes you kind of feel salesy. Instead, really attach to what you resonate with and allow your niche market to resonate with that as well. And then what feelings do I need to have about my audience, my team, my customers, and my future clients? You need to not think that, oh, they're going to have a terrible experience. Hi, Nolan. Can you say hi? Hi. How's bedtime going? Is it going pretty good? good? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, to the loop. Love you, bye. Mommy. I'm talking. Mommy, can you do bedtime? Mm -hmm. I will after this. Okay, bye. This guy. My feelings that I have about my audience, which is my son, is that if he does not go to bed, just give them a side eye. So what feelings do you have about that? I know that I can sometimes internalize when, if I feel like my team is not, is not successful, I take that on me. I'm like, okay, that means that I'm not successful. Maybe it's my clients. My clients come in and they're not successful. They give up before their package even arrive. How many times have you internalized that as you being a bad coach? You have got to flip your mindset and you have got to lead the race. You know, the leader sets the pace and you're the leader for your audience on social media. You're the leader for your team, whether it's a team of one or a team of 50. You're a leader for your clients and your fit community and your energy sets the pace. And yes, that's a lot of pressure that's put on your shoulders, but make it a fun pressure. Make it, man, I have to dive into my personal development. So I have something to give back to my team and my clients and my social media community. Make pouring into yourself and doing your workouts a priority because then it gives you something to give back to all those people who are counting on you. And then what is my focus action plan based on the highest version of myself? Like, I talked about, you have to have an action goal. Having these goals is amazing, but if you do not have some sort of action goal of actually following through, it will become a cute vision board tucked in your binder that never gets followed through. And you'll be three years down the road having the same goals on the piece of paper. You have to be focused and disciplined in your pursuit. And then what is my fail plan? What is the worst thing that happens if I follow through with my action plan and I still fail on my goal? What is the worst thing that's going to happen? And really look at that and then determine if what you're going for makes sense and if what you're going for gets you excited and driven and makes you feel like, holy cow, what if I go all in and this happens at the end of 2022? Like it should just give you all the feels. All right, almost done, I promise. So I know that when you think of Beachbody, you think health and fitness, right? And we think health and fitness business, but can I just let you in on a little secret? This is actually a personal growth and leadership business with lucrative earning potential. Most of the work is up here. 100% what will make or break you in this business is your mindset. A negative mindset, you're not gonna go anywhere right? We can teach you all the other things. We can teach you how to show up on social media. We can teach you how to run challenge groups. You can push play on workouts. You can follow a nutrition system. But if you don't actively work on intentionally choosing better positive thoughts, you're never going to get where you want to be. And that's just the fact of the matter. It is a personal growth. Your business will only grow to the level that you're growing at. Um, and the level of leadership, your team will only grow to your level of leadership. So really buckle down on that. If you take nothing else away, just know it ends and begins right up here. And again, healthy intentional goal is set from a place of abundance, self-sufficiency, and trust in yourself in the process, but not at the expense of your health and family and relationships. That might mean you have to set better boundaries for yourself. Uh, I know for some of us, we take, we go hard on some big goals and that's awesome. I'm here for that. But I also want you to be in this a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. And in order to have that sustainable business, you have to really create goals that are healthy, um, set business uh, working hours and set boundaries for yourself. And that also means with your teammates. I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of people that join you that say they want this, um, but aren't actually taking the action steps to that. And it's okay to distance yourself from that energy because all it's going to do is pull you down. And we know a lot of it's up here in our mindset. We got to keep ourselves lifted up. Everybody should be growing. If other people aren't growing, that's on them. We give you all the tools, but you got to protect your energy and your boundaries. Achieving goals requires a 
calm, decisive, clear plan of action instead of chihuahua energy. We all sometimes get out of chihuahua energy. It's okay. Recognize it and pull yourself back and be like, all right, how can I be more clear on this? How can I be decisive? And how can I have a focused plan of action? Always get yourself back on track when you feel like yourself, you're going to the franticness. And then just to be super frank, I know that what we do is fun and reels are fun. And sometimes we think, oh, this is super fun. I already have a career that has, you know, some stressors in it. And I don't, I don't need that in my life. Like, I just need this to be fun. And absolutely, there's a lot of things in this business that are fun and that will bring you joy, right? But there's a lot of things that aren't that fun and that don't bring you joy. And that's with any business, any job that's going to produce income. It just is what it is, right? I mean, there's parts of parenthood hearing my kids. I love being a mom, but there's parts of parenthood that don't bring me joy. Uh, exhibit A, bedtime, right? But in the bigger picture, they do bring me joy. And it's the same thing here. Not every part of this business will bring you joy, but the results will. I don't necessarily love doing a reel every single day. Sometimes like if I have to see myself one more time doing a silly face, I might vomit. But you know what I love? I love that today, December 27th, my kids don't go back to school until the 4th, but I didn't have to race out the door and go to work. I love that this year, I didn't have to stress about paying for Christmas gifts or putting it on credit card or being like, oh, nickeling and dining. Didn't have to do that. And that feels good. That result is worth me doing what it takes to push play on workouts when I don't want to do it, to running challenge groups when I'd rather not be that motivating and showing up on social media. That's worth it to me, right? That the stuff that I don't always necessarily love to do, the results are worth it. And I would choose it 1000 times over. But if you can know that and just know that not every part of the business is like rainbows and butterflies, it'll help you remember what's my vision. That's what I'm working for. That's what will bring me joy. And that's what make it work fit. And keep that vision in mind and remember success loves consistency. The hardest part of this business is when you put your foot on the gas pedal and then you pull off and you put your foot on the gas pedal and you pull off. It's brutal for everybody. And I just want you to know, if you want to be successful in this business, keep your foot on the gas pedal. You don't have to slam it down and go crazy and give that to all energy, but find a pace that works for you and keep your foot on the pedal. And that's where your success comes from. Okay. So homework for today and for bringing back to the next call, which will be breaking down and kind of reverse engineering your goals, total success club points that you earned in 2021. So not per month, not your average, like your total number that you earned total number of total number of working coaches that you recruited. So this is not referred customers. This is not discount coaches. This is people that came in and were like, yes, I want to work the business. I am here for it. I'm a working coach. Average weekly paycheck. So take what you made. If you look in your coach online office, you'll be able to see see year to date. This Thursday will be your final um, paycheck for 2021, and it'll show year to date earnings. So look for add yourself, your spouse account, and any other additional business centers that you have, and then take that year to date earning, split it by 52 to get your average weekly paycheck so that you have a starting place for where you're headed next year. Give yourself what was the highest week that you had in 2021, what was the highest month you had in 2021, and what was your highest team cycle bonus. Again, you can do um, highest team cycle bonus per business center, like yourself, your spouse, or your multiple business centers, if you have them, or you can combine them and, and do your highest week for that. So your highest team cycle bonus, because this business is about passive income. That is the goal. So that's a number that we want to track. So come back to this call with the goals that you set during this call or after and come back with this homework that analyzes what you did in 2021 because you've got to have that base and kind of that startup that you can look at and stare every day wherever your workspace is and look okay my 2021 highest check was this here's where i'm headed this is my goal and that way when you achieve it you can see it so we're going to get these things down and just kind of help and, and learn how to track these things i know we went a little over time hopefully this was helpful i know that a lot of people may be watching the recording of this if you have questions please let us know we will see you again next week to go over this as you're looking for um as we head into january there will be a super saturday week super saturday weekend not super saturday super weekend coming up so you will be able to look in your local area to see where they are i don't know if they're having in person or not raquel do you know 
I guess in probably Austin, didn't. I don't believe they are, but I know that in other parts of the country, they are having in person. So if you are that, oh, I'm super jealous. Go get in person if you can, because it'll be awesome. Yes. If you can at all go in person and see it or get with a group of people that are, are like you're get a, a group of people together and watch it together. It's so much more impactful. Um, it's really good. Dallas is happening in person. Philly is not. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, okay. And I know, um, not a lot of people are on here, but everybody could say a little quick prayer for our friend, Laura Simon and her pregnancy. Um, she finds out a lot of information tomorrow. So just say, say a little prayer for everything to go smoothly and for God to step in and help make things peaceful. Um, hope that everybody has a wonderful evening. We will see y'all on the social. Bye y'all.